as Tim Rourke. Patricia Donahue as Lucy Hamilton. And Herbert Rudley as Will Gentry. With special guest star, Julie Adams. Michael Shane's office. Uh, no, he hasn't, Miss Morton. I'm sorry. Well, I, I have tried to locate him, but you... S well, just as soon as Mr. Shane comes in, I'll have him... I have to talk to him. I need him. Why doesn't he call? Miss Morton, I can only repeat that the reason Mr. Shane hasn't called me is because he's on a very important case. <laughs> Other men come to work at 8.30 in the morning. Where have you been all day? Uh, fishing. Now, he tells me. Well, any luck? No, no. One. How many calls? Seven. Yeah. From one person. Miss Greta Morton, no less. Called seven times. No less. Greta Morton, the crime reporter? The same, fangs and all. What'd she want? Oh, she wouldn't tell me. I, I think she's allergic to underlings. Yeah. Maybe she wants to put me in her column. Well, I hope not. When they make her column, they're usually ripe for jail. Where do I call it? Oh, wait a minute. This just arrived special delivery five minutes ago. Four enclosures plus a letter. You better have a look. You had three days to get out of Florida alive. Letters clipped from a magazine. Number two. Two more days. Number three. One day left. What else? A letter. Mr. Shane, it is now 6.30. I've given up hope that you'll call before it's too late. I enclose three notes that my secretary will explain, also part of a retainer. I trust you'll earn it by finding my murderer. Signed, Greta Morton. Your number? Uh, Tide Haven Hotel, Highland 64699. Retainer. How much? Fourth enclosure. One half of a thousand dollar bill. Miss Greta Morton, please. Come on, ring. Will you? I'll hold on. Miss Greta Morton. Paging Miss Greta Morton. Telephone. Telephone for Miss Greta Morton. That's better. I never kiss a lady when she's wearing glasses. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rock, please. Now, you know, we've been together for nearly two hours and you're still being formal. The name's Tim. Timothy Patrick Xavier Rourke. Take your pick, but not Mr. I'm sorry. I'll accept your apology on one condition, that you'll marry me. <laughs> you see, I've been stood up by your boss, and I still have my sense uh. of humor. And that's unusual for a newspaper man. Which reminds me, when is La Morton joining us? As soon as she contacts Mr. Shane. Oh, that may take a week. Mike's not always easy to find. What's he like, Tim? Mr. Shane, I mean. I've heard a lot about him. Well, if your uh, boss lady's in trouble, he's the best man in the state. He picks his cases, though. Why all the interest? Because, well, I, I've never seen Miss Morton so upset. Maybe Mr. Shane can help. Maybe. Miss Greta Morton, telephone. Paging Miss Greta Morton. I'll take it here, boy. Oh, have 
death a thousand dollar bill. <laughs> People play games when they think they're going to be murdered. And Greta Morton does. The way I hear it, she'll do anything for a story. Well, when a woman exposes crime seven days a week, she has to expect... Hello, Mike Shane, Miss Morton. This is Beatrice Drake, Mr. Shane, Miss Morton's secretary. I heard her being paged and I... Well, oh, didn't she answer in her room? Well, if she... Oh, Mr. Shane, something is... Hello, Mike. Tim, did Greta Morton reach you today? Then get over here right away. We'll meet you in the cocktail lounge. And forget the red lights. Close up shop, Lucy. We'll see you in the morning. Well, where are you going? Fishing. Huh? For the other half of this bill. doesn't want me to. This is murder, Mike. You can't withhold evidence. Greta Morton retained me to take her case. But she was alive then. She's dead now. I know. But she left something for me. See what's in her hand? A little reminder that I should start looking. She sent me the other half. But the police. They'll be called in, but not right away. I need all the time I can get. You're not being smart, Mike. Maybe not, but this is personal. If I hadn't been out fishing all day, Whoever did this, I want to nail him first. Then the police can. Now, do you think you can pull yourself together and help me? Well, I, I worked with Greta for seven years. She wasn't the easiest person to get along with, but I understood her. I'll do whatever you say, Mr. Shane. Good. First, you can answer a few questions. Did. Did Greta have many enemies? She collected them. All those papers in the other room, the ones that were searched. They could have put a lot of people away. Anyone in particular? You could fill a phone book with their names. Did she have any visitors recently? Any fights, arguments? Not that I... Wait a minute, yes. Last night, I was in the office working late. Greta was here. The door was closed, but I could hear some man shouting at her. Did you try to go in? I knocked, but she said she didn't need me. After that, whoever it was kept his voice down. Man's voice. I think you'd recognize it if you heard it again. I think so. In fact, I'm sure I would. Well, that changes things. You're sleeping out tonight. Why? The man you heard might have been the killer, and he knows you were here. I don't want to make it easy for him to find you. My name all over it. But I wasn't available. Tim, I want you to remember something. I haven't been in this room. You haven't? Right now, I'm out with Miss Drake, looking for Greta Morton, who's still alive. She is? I'll fill you in on how to play it on the way down. Are you sure you know what you're doing? If I did, I wouldn't be in this business. Is it... Is it legal 
phone for me to evade questioning about a murder? What murder? Oh. You and Tim and I waited for Miss Morton, but she didn't show. Then we went up to her room. No one answered. So you and I went out looking for her. Got it? Every move we make will be checked by the police. Where would she go? Restaurants, bars? Where would she have dinner? few things. What about those threatening letters your boss received? How'd you know? I thought you didn't talk to her. Uh, hello, would you page Tim Rourke for me, please? Well, she mailed him to me, special delivery. She wrote a letter at 6.30, and it was picked up at the hotel chute by 7.30. Yes, I'll hold on. Now, those warnings. Why didn't she call me when she got the first one? Because she laughed at it, and the second one, too. She thought it was some kind of a joke. But when she got the third, she got worried and told me to get your number. She showed the warnings to you? I showed them to her. I always open the mail and screen it. Who did she think they were from? If she knew, she didn't tell me. Hello, Tim. Mike. Yeah, Mike. Ready to move? You can throw the switch as soon as I hang up. Let's go. Well, I think one more should do it. Well, we uh, could try the Tahitian. You mean Leo Gannett's place? Uh-huh. Well, wait a minute. I just thought of something. What? Gannett might have sent those letters. Part of Greta's expose of Miami crime involved him. You mean his gambling room? He had to close it down. She was getting too close. I know for a fact that he offered her $50,000 to leave the state. It's a lot of money to keep your name out of the papers. What did she say? She laughed in his face. Leo doesn't have a sense of humor. I think we'll try the Tahitian. But you said Gannett closed his gambling room. He did. Parking lot's loaded. It's a safe bet they're not all here just to sample that Cantonese menu he uses as a front. Do they know you here? No. Good. Go in without me and try to take a look at the gambling room. See if it's still closed. Where will you be? I'll meet you here in 15 minutes. Sorry, sir, you'll have to come through the regular entrance. Well, maybe I want to surprise him. Well, I'm here to see that he doesn't get surprised. Well, start earning your money, friend. All right, Kurt, suppose you let me worry about that, huh? Hello, Leo. Well, well. Mike Shan. We'll be in touch, Kurt. Let me know what happens. How did you get in? Oh, your boy was uh, taking a coffee break. That was very neglectful of him. Well, I, I made him take it. 
You got past me, Mr. Gannett. All Throw right, all right. Shane's a friend of mine. Get back where you belong. Huh? Well, how are you, my cat? Still looking through keyholes? Has Greta Morton been here tonight? No, and she won't be. You sound very sure of that. Yeah, I am. I gave orders not to let her in. But as women reformers, you know, a woman's place is in the home. What's she to you, Mike? A client. Someone's trying to run her out of town. No, I'll sign that petition. Suppose she decides to stay. Then she might stay for good with a stone over her head. Oh, that's not a threat, Mike. It's just advice. Here's that Morton Dame stooge, Mr. Gannett. I caught her snooping around in the back room. You were too hard, friend. Shane. Let him go. Now let's talk, Mike, huh? Without interruptions. Why don't you make yourself comfortable, huh? Want a drink? I only drink with friends. How about you, Miss? Sir? Uh, I sense a definite hostility. Well, that's unfortunate because I've got to ask you a few questions. Did Greta Morton send you here? I sent her. Is that true? Don't answer me, B. We're leaving. Are you? Well, you're not going to shoot, Leo. The sound of a shot would panic this place. I might risk it. After all, you did break into my office, didn't you? Take the girl into the other room, see what she's got to say without Mr. Shane around. Don't! Do what I say! full blast, huh? But why tonight, not last night? I tried to find that out, but I was recognized. By whom? Kurt Emery. Kurt? I think I saw him in Leo's office when I came in. Who is he? He's Greta's husband. Morton's her maiden name. Didn't even know she was married. Well, they're separated. She's been paying him $500 a month to leave her alone. One reason she was here was to establish Florida residence for a divorce. When would it be final? Next week. We have three days left to get out of Florida. Mike! Now, don't get excited. Emery may have sent those notes, but why would he kill the goose that laid 500 golden eggs every month? Uh, you know, I called you Mike then. Keep it up. We're doing fine. <laughs> Michael Shane. Michael Shane. Greta Morton was practicing penmanship. She picked an interesting name to use. Where is he, Tim? He's looking for Greta Morton. I guess he won't find her. What about Beatrice Drake? She's with him. Oh, that's cozy. Look, Will, I've got a story to write. But... Any more questions? The same one. Where's Shane? Looking for Greta Morton. Your needle's stuck. Suppose you get on that phone and try and locate him. I'm sorry, I haven't got a dime. Oh, you're being a great help, Tim. I'll keep that in mind. Daniels, put out an APB on Mike Shane. I want him tonight. my secretary's place. You spend the night with her. Coming, Michael. Hi. Oh. Lucy, Miss Beatrice Drake, Miss Morton's secretary. Oh, how do you do? B, Lucy Hamilton. Hello. Okay, now that you know her name, forget it. If anyone calls or comes to the door, you never heard of her. Right. 
I'll pick you up in the morning. And don't let her out of your sight. Oh, what about Greta Morton? She's dead. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I should have guessed, though. Will Gentry just called here for you. Well, if he calls again, you haven't seen me. Or Miss Drake. I never saw her in my life. I'm on my way home. Check with you later. Good night, Michael. Good night. Well, uh, make yourself at home. Thank you. Hi, Charlie. Mr. Shane. I'm Kurt Emery. I saw you tonight at Leo Gannett's office. What about it? I went back to Leo's after you left. He tells me you're working for my wife. So? Did she hire you to spy on me? Suppose she did. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm her husband. I have a right to know what she's up to. I'm not asking you to break any confidences. Just a little information. You figure this is my price? Mm -hmm. How's that? Better? No. Now look, what time did you get to Leo's place tonight? I'm not paying you to ask questions, Shane. Just answer them. Why did Greta hire you? She didn't like her fan mail. What were you trying to do, Emery? Scare her out of the state so she couldn't establish residence? I don't have to listen to this. I forgot your money. Next time you write letters to a lady, sign your name. Excuse me, I must be in the wrong apartment. <laughs> well, make yourselves at home and have a drink. Thanks, don't mind if I do. Is this social or business, Will? When I want to be social, I go home to my wife. I don't blame you. Fix me a drink, will you, Tim? Be right with you. Oh, by the way, uh, did Greta Morton ever show up at the hotel? Beatrice and I never did find her. Grab a shower and change. Got a date. Uh, with whom? Greta Morton's secretary? I mean, what's this all about? Oh, thanks. Tell him. Greta Morton's dead. What? She was dead when we tried to reach her tonight. Oh, no. Come on, Mike. Where's Beatrice Drake? Oh, no. Just take it easy, Will. Let, let, let me get my bearings. So, Greta Morton's dead. That's right. And you're turning corners. Now, where's the girl? Well, what do you want her for? Questioning? Maybe suspicion of murder. Murder? Oh, use your head. She was with Tim at the Tidehaven Lounge from 6 o'clock on. With only two minutes out for the powder room. How do we know Greta wasn't killed before 6? Well, she wrote a letter at 6.30. A letter to whom? To me. Here. Here, yeah, read it. First line. It is now 6.30. Et cetera, et cetera. What she tell you about these notes? Oh, I never saw her. Uh, I was out fishing all day and she couldn't reach me. Come on, Mike. What have you come up with so far? Well, not much. You can check on Kurt Amory, Greta's husband. I have a hunch he sent those letters. And drop in on Leo Gannett. She was getting ready to roast him in her column. You know anything about a torn thousand dollar bill? Why? Because she might have been killed for money. This was in her hand when we found her. What would you do to the guy that had the other half of that? Book him for murder. Well, lock me up. Where'd you get this? Came in the letter. My retainer. I think you're on the wrong track, Will. Now listen, Mike. Come out of there! Shane! Let him alone, Will. He knows what he's doing. So do the police. You tell him for me he's in trouble. If Beatrice Drake isn't in my office in an hour, I'll have his license. You think he can remember that? 
Well, maybe I better write it down. Maybe you better. Did you hear what he said? Yeah, I can imagine. You can take your license, Mike, obstructing justice. Obstructing justice? Don't you get it either? Look, you put it in the paper that Greta Morton talked to me today. That means that the killer will be looking for Beatrice and me. He can't find B, but I'm available. Understand? Vaguely. You need any help? Yeah, but not here. Stay with Gentry and see what he comes up with. I gave him two good leads. All right. You sure you don't want company? I'll have it. I have a hunch I'll have a visitor. And soon. Talk to you later. Knocking. Well, I. My name is Leonard Harsh. I didn't knock because I was making up my mind whether to talk to you or not. Go on. I heard on the radio that Greta Morton was murdered tonight. And? The broadcast said she'd been in touch with you. How would you like to make $10,000? Turn it down. I'll pay you that to keep my name out of this. What's your connection with Greta Morton? She was blackmailing me. I'm a good listener, Harsh. Drink? No, thanks. Ten years ago, I embezzled some money. But the firm I was working for was very lenient. I paid it all back and the whole thing was forgotten. Somehow, Greta Morton found out about it. Last week, she wrote me a letter demanding some money. I don't have to tell you what it would do to me if it got out. Did you pay her? No. I went to see her last night. I had a few drinks under my belt. I threatened her. That fits. Her secretary heard her arguing with a man last night. Now, what about Miss Morton? What did she say? She told me to get out. Pretended she didn't know what I was talking about. What about tonight? Where were you until 7? I was on my boat. Uh, too many people were on boats today. Were you alone? Yes. Friend, what you need is an alibi. I didn't kill her. You've got to believe me. Why? Because you're willing to pay me $10,000 to keep you out of this? Yes. I'll take 5000 now, the balance when the case is closed. What if I get involved? You'll be out 5,000 bucks. You see, I've got my own neck to think about. The only way I can keep you clean is for me to find a killer. And for that, Harsh, you pay five G's on the line. You were ready, huh? Yes, I was ready. Before you go, do you uh, still have the blackmail letter Miss Morton sent you? Uh, she wanted 25 G's mailed to her at the hotel. Huh? I would have paid it if I thought it would end it. But I suppose once is never enough for a blackmailer. It usually isn't. Well, you'll be hearing from me. Either way. Either way? As soon as I find out if you're clean or dirty.
Hello? Oh, yes, Michael. Yes, I understand. Where? All right, I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh, tell her I want to talk to you. Oh, oh uh, just a second. Lucy wants to talk to you. Where are you, Michael? Michael? Well, he hung up. Well, he said he had to talk fast. He, he sounded funny, like he was whispering. Well, you should have let me answer it. Oh, I wanted you to, but, but you were in the shower. Well, what did he want? Well, he wouldn't tell me. He just said he wanted me to meet him. Oh, well, he wants me to go with him, doesn't no, he? No, no, he told me to come alone. He said it was very important, but for you not to worry. I wonder what it could be. No, I was just dozing. Where's B? Well, she's with you, isn't she? With me? What are you talking about? You called her on the phone and told her to meet you, didn't you? It wasn't me, Lucy. Oh, Michael. I'd better find her run fast. Whoever it was might... Answer it. Hello. It's Tim. He wants to talk to you. What is it, Tim? I thought I'd be hearing from you by now. Don't you listen to the radio? It's in all the newscasts. I'm in Gentry's office now. Makes sense, Tim. What about Gentry? He broke the case. It's all wrapped up. All right, Tim. Now feed it to me nice and slow. Who does Gentry think it is? Kurt Emery. What? Yeah, the witness saw him at his wife's door at 6.30 tonight, and his fingerprints were on those threatening letters. Did he confess? Well, they haven't found him yet. Gentry's got a call out for him. Maybe he's with Leo Gannett. I saw them together earlier. We can't find Leo either. Tim, tell me something. Did Gentry call here for B? Not that I know of. Why? Oh, nothing. Thanks, Tim. I'll be in touch. Did you know they're after Emery? Yes, it was on the radio. What time did B get that call? Was it after the broadcast? I think so. Why? Because Emery might have called her. And if he's guilty... I shouldn't have let her go. Uh, it's not your fault. Look up the address of a man named Leonard Harsh. Harsh? Yeah, Miss Morton had been trying to blackmail him. He might have come up to my place to find out if B was there, and then when she wasn't... Well, anyway, he's the only lead I've got left. 638 Foxcroft. Thanks. Mike, let me know about B. Okay. How late it is? I've got a watch. Would you mind explaining? Where's Beatrice Drake? Miss Morton's secretary? I thought you knew where she was. I did, until you called her. What are you talking about? You knew she could identify you as the man who argued with Miss Morton last night. I don't even know what she looks like. Your car is outside. The hood is warm. Where have you been, Harsh? It's not my car. Then whose is it? What's he doing here? He's not on the witness stand, Shane. He doesn't have to answer your questions. Well? We, we have some business. What kind? It's confidential, isn't it, Mr. Hodge? Mm -hmm. All right. Have it your way. 
But you just blew five grand. Get somebody else to wipe the dirt off your name. Shane, wait. He, he barged in here and asked me about somebody named Kurt Emery. Said he'd implicate me in the Morton murder if I didn't tell him. He's lying. Leo, uh, talk. Let me go. You want your arm back? All right, all right. How did you know about Harsh? Kurt Emery. How did he know? He was in the hotel last night. He wanted to see Greta. He saw Harsh go into her room and had him arguing. So? So Harsh must have come back tonight and killed her. That's ridiculous. Shut up. So you figured if you could pin it on Harsh, they'd take the heat off you, right? But why Harsh? The cops think Emery killed her. Well, they're wrong. Emery was working for you, wasn't he? You wanted Greta out of town, so you paid him to see what he could do. That's one reason he sent those letters. All right, so he threatened her, but he didn't kill her. Where is he? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do, Leo. You're never out of touch with your boys. Where is he? It's at the Ricardo Hotel on 9th. Okay. Let's go. You, you want me to come with you? That's right. Where do I stand? I'll let you know. You can go to bed now. Uh, Mr. Shane. What? There's something I have to tell you. Tonight I wasn't on my boat. I went back to see Greta Morton. I was in the hotel corridor when you and your friends found her body. Why are you telling me now? Figure the police will find out and hang it on you? No, just wanted to get it off my chest. I was up there, but I didn't kill her, and that's the truth. You lied to me before. Why should I believe you this time? Mm. in the back. You should have let him turn around, Leo. I didn't kill him. You were up here earlier tonight. No. That's why you didn't want to come with me. You knew what was here. All right, I know. But when I found him, he was dead. I'm listening. I heard the police were looking for him. I called, but he didn't answer. So I came here and found him like that. That's why I went to see Hosh. Since Emery was dead, Hosh ought to be the killer. You ought to be a cop, Leo. Maybe Gentry will give you a badge. Look, Shane, I brought you here. Now, how about letting me go? Well, you found the body. I wouldn't want to deprive you of the credit. Shane, keep me out of this. How much do you want, huh? Keep it. You'll need it for a lawyer. Hold it. draft. I don't want you to catch cold. Now sit down.
operator. Get me Franklin 41289, please. Hello? Yeah, Mike. You can stop looking for Kurt Emery. What? Yeah, at the Ricardo Hotel on 9th, room 42. Tim there? Let me talk to him. Okay. He wants to talk to you. He's found Emery. Get my car ready. Am I? Huh? Okay. <sighs> Think you can tell me what happened now? Well, I... I got a call from you at Lucy's apartment. But I guess it wasn't you. And you... He asked me to meet him here. When I came in, I... I saw Kurt Emery lying on the floor. Before I could scream, someone grabbed me around the throat. Then I, I guess I fainted. Yeah, and he put you in the closet. And he probably knew it locked automatically. It was a safe, clean way to get rid of you. Suffocation. Good thing I saw your glasses. I must have dropped them when you fainted. Now, don't worry about him. How do you feel? A little shaky. Look, I'd like to get out of here before the police come. I think I can clear this up tonight. Are you with me? Come on. They're deaf. place for a floating crap game. Yeah. I always get these keys mixed.
might be interesting to kiss a murderess. But no thanks. What? You sound surprised. Almost as surprised as Emery must have been when you killed him. Oh, <laughs> Michael, what are you talking about? Well, you know I didn't kill Emery. Somebody called me. You know that. Mm -hmm. You had the operator ring Lucy's number, and then you pretended it was me. It was the only way you could get out of the apartment and find Emery. <sighs> That's not true. You had to kill him. As soon as you heard he tried to get into Greta's hotel room at 6.30. Why in the world would I? He could have ruined your alibi by testifying that Greta didn't answer him because she was already dead. But she was alive at 6.30. You saw that special delivery letter. Mm -hmm. The one you wrote before 6.30, after you stabbed her. Well, you're not making sense, Michael. Well, that letter was mailed after 6.30, and I was with Tim Rourke then. Except for a few minutes for the powder room. Time enough to drop it down the mail chute. Michael, why are you saying these horrible things to me? Haven't I done everything I could to help you? Haven't I done everything that you've told me to? <laughs> oh, I've got to hand it to you, B. You're wonderful. A picture of outraged innocence. I ought to be convinced, but I guess I'm just a no good, suspicious heel. Well, I need another one. I'm sure you do. Well, you realize, of course, that, that none of this makes any sense. Why in heaven's name would I kill Greta? Because she found out about your blackmail scheme when Harsh accused her last night. My scheme? If Greta had written the blackmail note, she wouldn't have wanted the money mailed to her. You opened all the mail. You told me so yourself. Besides, she turned down $50,000 from Leo Gannett. It's not very consistent behavior for a blackmailer. Well, then why would I lock myself in Kurt Emery's closet? I could have suffocated. You heard Gannett knocking on the door after you killed Emery, so you jumped in the closet. But you didn't know it locked automatically. You believe all this, don't you? You actually believe it. Mm hmm So will the jury. Then what about Greta's letter to you and, and the thousand dollar bill? She found out you were using her name for blackmail, so she tried to get in touch with me. But you killed her. You ransacked the office so it would look like someone had searched it. Then you forged the letter, put in Emery's threats. The final touch was that thousand dollar bill. And I fell for it. Oh. Figures. I should have checked your purse. You have a gun in your belt. Don't reach for it. Just wanted a cigarette. You don't have time. Sorry, Michael. I'll bet you are. You do a thing often enough, it gets to be a habit. I don't like the idea of having to kill you. Neither do I. Want to know something? As a matter of fact, I hate the idea more than you do. Tell me something, B. Just out of curiosity. How did you get Greta? Did you sneak up behind her with those scissors? No. I looked her right in the eye, like now. And then she started to run. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, next time you want me to babysit, remind me to bring a gun. That was a pretty cryptic message you gave me on the phone. Just get over here and wait. It was worth it, wasn't it? You got a free confession. Didn't cost you paper or cent. Give Gentry a call, huh? Hey, where are you going? Fishing. At this hour? You better let Lucy know. I'm taking her along. How'd you get that? Well, Gentry gave it to me. Said you deserved it. 
for a change. You know, sometimes I almost like that guy. Don't ever tell him I said that. Hello. I'm Richard Denning. Uh, that is, at the moment, I'm Richard Denning, the actor. A few months from now, however, I hope you and the television audience will think of me as Michael Shane, Miami's finest and most colorful private detective. And sitting over here, going over one of his scripts for future production, is the creator of Mike Shane, Brett Halliday. Hello, Mike. Mike? Mike Shane. Remember, I've waited 25 years to meet you. It's been worth waiting for. I think you're all doing a terrific job here at Four Star. And I wish you luck with the series. Thank you very much, Brett. Gentlemen, we believe we have a successful television show for you in Michael Shane. The ingredients, one, Michael Shane, America's best known private detective. Now, he's pre-sold to millions of viewers. Two, we have Mr. Brett Halliday, the creator of Mike Shane, who will be the top working writer on the show. Three, a fine cast of actors playing the regular characters in the series. And we will have the top Hollywood and New York actors and actresses playing the important roles in each week's story of mystery and adventure. Four, you have the creative and production talent of four-star television behind the scenes all the way. Now, all of these elements will be working to help you sell your product to the television audience. The way we see it, we have two important jobs to do for you. First, we're going to attract millions of viewers to watch us every week and to see and hear your sales message. And secondly, since we feel we are a part of your sales team, we want to help you promote your products in any other way we can. Thank you.